Welcome, my name is Jeff Burke and this is tutorial two of the WPF Real World App series. And in uh, the first tutorial, we started discussing about real world uh, customer defined applications and how we needed to follow some type of structure. So we started generating this list of how we define what the software is going to be. Now there are other things that we can add to like uh, we need section control for the different types of animals. Well what sections are those? We could make a list uh, like amphibians, arthropods, birds, uh, that type of thing. So we we can actually continue to uh, create our defining aspect uh, of the software but for right now, I think that we're going to move on to probably one of the most important things in this definition when it comes to setting up your uh, initial project. And that is we need to have the software install and run on several operating systems. How, how are we going to do that? I, I mean, what is the philosophy or what is our approach to meeting that particular uh, item in our definition? Uh, we know that we got to build a software, we know it's got to be educational, we know it's going to be based on animals, but the more important aspect as far as a programmer is, what is it that we want to uh, set up that project to be so that we can try to meet that goal of getting it to just run on multiple operating systems. So let's take a look at that for a moment and, and think about it uh, in several different ways. So go ahead and open up your Visual Studio. I'm using the Express Edition 2013 for Windows Desktop because that's what we're going to be building as a desktop application and start by file new project. We're going to be uh, Visual C Sharp. It's going to be a WPF application and for the purposes of uh, giving it some type of title we're going to call it uh, educational zoo because because our customer says that he wants it based on animals and uh, uh, and uh, they want to have different groupings so really the whole educational aspect of this software is going to be about animals we'll just use the term zoo and we'll call it the educational zoo software uh, you can of course save it in any location that you'd like to go. We've talked about that in other videos. It's going to create a directory for all our file solution uh, information. Go ahead and press OK and let's get started with the uh, first window that is going to come up for our project. So here we are. We just opened a, uh, you know, started a new project. We have our solution explorer over here. We have a main window. Uh, we have our uh, definition of that main window as far as for style, layout, uh, sizing and all that and this is where we have to start thinking about that first goal and that first goal that uh, we were talking about that we wanted to think about was the software install and run on several operating systems. Well for me when I think about that I have to think about what came pre-installed in operating systems for .NET uh, I know that, uh, you know, Vista started with .NET 3.0 as being included in the software. So anybody who has Vista will be able to run an application uh, that we create with .NET 3.0 without having to go and install the .NET or download the .NET uh, file uh, and, in, and getting it all going or uh, without having to do something extra that we don't necessarily uh, want them to do. When I provide an installer, I don't like to put a bunch of extra files that I have to install. I just want to install my program and I want to use what is already a standard or available as much as possible. There are always exceptions, but I like to try and keep it as simple as possible in the beginning. So what does that mean? Well, operating systems next, Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 8.1, they all had .NET uh, uh, also included with their installs. Now they were different uh, versions, 4.0, 4.1, uh, 4.5, whatever the case may be, but 
they also support all the functionalities of the 3.0 so generally speaking when I'm trying to meet a wide variety of operating systems which is one of our requirements need to install and run on several operating systems I know that if I can run uh, or if I can write the entire application using the .NET 3.0 items I should also be able to not have to provide anything extra and it should install and run on anything from Vista to 8.1 so by doing that to me that is a pretty wide base especially in this day and age where Vista has been uh, you know kind of uh, past operating system for quite a while now and all that type of thing so what we're going to do is we are going to set up this project for using .NET 3.0. Now with Visual Studio Express uh, 2013 the initial properties of the project do not start out set up for 3.0. So we're going to go over here to our Solution Explorer and right click on our project and go to properties. When we get into the properties area we notice that the target framework is .NET framework of 4.5 well we're going to drop down this and change it to .NET 3.0 of course it's going to say well wait a minute this is going to uh, you know uh, uh, change things are you sure you want to do it and we're going to say yes we we know that we want to go to 3.0 at this point Visual Studio is going to make a couple changes and adjustments to our program for now that's all we're really going to do we don't worry about all this this is general settings that we may use later on but it really has nothing to do with the base structure of references and uh, .NET classes that we're going to have access to while we're making our WPF application that is going to be usable across multiple operating systems this is simply trying to take care of one of those items that was defined in what we wanted this application to be able to do and how we wanted it to be controlled. With that said, go ahead and close the properties, uh, the, the project properties window or tab, which will bring us back into here. Now, there's a couple things to know at this point. Once you've changed that .NET uh, target, in the properties over here in our uh, solution explorer if we expand our uh, references in the solution sorry not properties but our references these are the references of the dotnet framework items that originally were set up when uh, we created the project and it was at its default of 4.5. Notice that now there are some references that have the little yellow icons saying hey this is not compatible basically. So we're gonna just simply delete those items off our reference list because they are not part of the .NET 3.0. At that point we now know that all the references in our project are there and supported for what we're going to build. Like I say, this is just the beginning structure trying to target one of those items on our list. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look here. We're going to go to our tab, which is the code side of our main window, and take a look at what is over here. Now, notice that we have the red squiggly lines underneath a couple items in our using area. Well, again, because these items were connected to some of those references that were initially set up. So we can do the same thing over here. We can simply delete those particular items off our list. And now we should have everything that is uh, connected, being that we have no regular squigglies or anything over here in our references in our solution explorer indicating that there's a problem for me though this is not quite enough because I know that Visual Studio when it's getting ready to create a project and it's doing other things they have some files that are not necessarily out here for us to view right off one of those for instance is the app uh, XML 
let's try and run this project. We're going to have to save it in a minute anyway. So let's go ahead and try to run this project and see what it happens. Press start up here. And when it tries to go, we're going to get an error. There's something that's going on that still isn't right. And of course, it's going to be connected to what we just did. We changed the, the standard default .NET framework target. So for now, click no. We don't want to go to anything past. We're just going to say no. And it's going to bring up a couple errors that we can look at. If we simply double click on one of the errors, it's going to bring us to the app xaml.cs file. Well, this was another created file at the initial project setup. Again, these are connected to references that we deleted and that we changed when we went. So we're simply going to delete those out of the using section and then try to run our project again. Now what we've done at this point is we don't have anything on here but we know that these changes in references and these changes in our product, uh, project structure are now all in sync. They're going to work. It's going to open up a window. It's going to allow us to run this project. It's going to allow us to continue. So from a very basic standpoint, we can now close this app XAML. Don't need that open. And we'll go back to our primary window view here. But now we know that this actually will run even though it's in its only just showing up a, a window with no changes no setup or anything on there however with that said we have met this requirement that the customer wants in our mind as programmers and as uh, you know the guy setting up the software we feel that running the 3.0.NET framework is going to allow us to create an application and have it install on multiple operating systems, uh, past ones and current ones. So initially, unless we find some problem down the road, we have met this one requirement. So we're going to put a little star next to it and just kind of say, OK, for right now, we believe that we have taken care of that one particular item. At this point, we're going to call that the end of tutorial two, which is simply getting your Visual Studio project initially ready to start meeting the goals of the customer, creating that application in the real world, and we're going to continue on with tutorial number three and talk about other items that are on our list that we need to ensure, uh, other structures and setups that we're going to do, and other decisions that we have to make about how our software is going to run. So for now, I'll see you later. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I hope that you will come back for number three. See you now.